Um, quick turnaround from our first really beat down um, that we suffered early, but really encouraged by how we came back, finished in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. Uh, we'll make practice a lot more manageable. I think our uh, confidence was shaken a little bit, but it came back. So I think that'll carry us over now to where on Sunday we can't, South Carolina can't beat us twice. I think if we'd have finished down 25, down 50, you know, whatever math you want to extrapolate out of the deficit that we faced early, uh, certainly could have made for a different return trip home, different prep today, and then could have obviously be a different result on Sunday, which in this league, if you let that happen, then one loss becomes two losses, two losses becomes eight out of nine, like we saw last year. So uh, there was a lot of encouragement um, after re-watching the film, but you can't expect lapses against a team that I think has got the potential to be a Final Four team in South Carolina. So you turn your attentions to Missouri and a team we haven't beaten in seven games, so full attention now on the Tigers. Um, I guess we can start with a little bit more favorable matchup if you go <laughs> on here with Missouri, right? Yeah, and, you know, Aaliyah Boston, Victoria Saxton, Herbert Harrigan, even their guards, Beal, you know, there are some people on their rosters who exaggerate their size, and then there are people that put it, maybe don't do them justice. So, um, yeah, favorable size-wise, favorable style of play-wise. Um, but, again, when you've lost seven in a row to somebody, you haven't created much of a rivalry. Um, it's supposed to be our rival game, our two times a year rival game. So, um, you know, they have traditionally been an inside base team, but now they're a perimeter team with their freshmen. They've got a couple of really good freshmen on the perimeter. So, a, a different style a Missouri team than what we've played in those last seven. But nonetheless, a team that's certainly had our number and comes in very – I don't care what their record is overall. Uh, the only number I look at is 7-0 and in our last seven games. Well, and they do have one – they beat a LSU team, which uh, obviously beat a and Pretty good. Night. Yeah. Kennedy Carter got hurt. You know, if you saw Kennedy went down. But, yeah, LSU, beat an LSU team. You know, Missouri is very, very capable. And they can – you know, put their record out there all they want. It's, it's, we're not going to fall for that trick. We know, we know how good they can and are. Uh, you, you talked about kind of coming back from the first half. Uh, I mean, uh, could you imagine uh, Chelsea Dungy missing her first 11 shots? If you saw how they guarded her, yeah. I mean, listen, they I, – I, I know Coach Staley and her staff well enough to know that I would imagine on their scout film there was more than one or two clips of Chelsea in the SEC tournament against them, um, and they were very focused, very committed, and they were hard shots. Um, a couple of them I thought were great open looks, and Leah Boston just got there and blocked them. That's how good that kid is. Um, so it, it snowballed a little bit. Then when she did get an open one, it was hard to make because, you know, you've missed your first four or five. Um, drives that are sometimes resulting in free throws were not – and, you know, when you're struggling with a jump shot, the, the thing that she can always do is get, to, get herself to the foul line and see it go through the hoop. Uh, we couldn't even draw fouls. They weren't fouls. Aaliyah Boston blocked it. Bill Russell-ish kept it in play. She blocks it so hard that you physically fall, too. It's, it's, um, that started their transition. That 27 to 12, was that what it was in the first quarter, I think? It felt worse, believe it or not. I mean, I looked up and I thought, oh, well, I thought we were down 25 instead of 15. So, um, to be there and know that I think some of those shots go in the next time, I think at home maybe those calls go our way. Uh, you expect those two. That's just kind of the way our league is. So, it gives us encouragement for not only Sunday, but for the second time when we get South Carolina back here again. But, um, you know, she kept battling. She kept doing other things. And, um uh, Continued to give us a chance. We had it to six point or nine points with the ball. Had it to nine with the ball twice and got two pretty good looks at it. So six turnovers against a team like that in a hostile environment. I think we can make up a few points here and there between now and I think we play them eight games from now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, you've got this. 
you and I talked about kind of dividing the schedule up, and mm -hmm. this kind of ends the little four-game stretch, and then you get into yep. this to the six that maybe you can get yourself. Yeah, we'll be more. favored in. Yeah, um, this ends that pre. We call it the pre-buy. You know, we got the buy game. So our pre-buy game. Um, I said last night to the South Carolina media, I, I think there's going to be a lot of SEC teams that go one and two against the people we just played. <laughs> You're going to go one and two with A&M, South Carolina, Auburn. Maybe they can go one and three, but there's not going to be very many people that do a whole lot better than that. So I, I think you have to look at it in those ways to keep some perspective on it. But it, it does kind of make Sunday's game, you know, a big showdown. I, I don't think you shy away from that. I don't think you tell the kids any different than that. It's, it's a big game in the grand scheme of things. So um, – just judging by how they got off the plane, it's, it's kind of unique when you see their, their demeanor change from on the plane to off the plane after a loss, um, but encouraged by what we saw getting off the plane last night. Uh, the one thing you did get, uh, I mean, Ramirez and Tolfrey shot the ball. Yeah, it's becoming one of those. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a streak right now. It's, they're both near 50% in their last – 10 games, and they were incredibly hard shots last night. That, that little stretch that both of them went through. Um, when we were down 27 to 12, it, it was dis disappointing because we weren't going at them. If we'd have gone at them and done what we do and play fast and take our shots when we were open, make or miss, I'd have been okay with it. But we got passive. You know, Amber turned down a catch and shoot, and that was a uh oh moment. Like, uh oh. Because she got her one block before that. And she thought, well, I can't get this one off. I said, well, you can't worry about that. Let the next one. And then she got hot. So, same thing with Lex. Uh, it's human nature, but we've got to start overcoming that. And if we'd have been down 27 to 12, playing fast and being who we were, I'd been okay with it. But that's not who we were. The second, the third, second, third, and fourth quarter, we played fast. We were who we were, and we hung a lot better. But they're still continuing to shoot it. I'm not going to jinx them in any shape, form, or fashion. I'll let Phil Elson do that. He's been absolutely crushing us this year on free throws. Um, he's jinxed us almost every time. Uh, but I'm not going to jinx those two kids. They've uh, shot it well. They've taken good shots. They work at it. So you expect it to go in. It's almost getting to where now you're more, a little more surprised when they do miss. Um, Michaela shot it good last night. Uh, Aaron Barnum came in and got a three for us when we started trying to stretch the uh, the bigs out away from the basket. And, and Roe knocked one down. So, um more kids getting confident. I think it breeds that. Uh, when you've got two kids shooting it like Amber and, and Chelsea are, I mean, uh, Amber and Lex, I, I think it makes everybody feel like when you're in that shooting group with them, you, you better make a few too. What, what are positives that you feel like are positive matchups going in against Missouri? What do you feel like you guys do well? There? Well, they, you know, in the past they've always had a couple of bigs, big bigs. This year they don't have that depth. And we're pretty good if you've got one, like Auburn, one. If you've got two or three and you got another big on the perimeter that creates a, a matchup problem for Chelsea, um, and then that trickles down to, okay, now who does Lex, Michaela, or Amber guard? There's a little trickle down there. But I, I think the their inexperience at their big allows us to be a little bit more favorable in our man. Uh, we won't have to play zone as much, which – tends to not be as good a rebounding defense for us as it as man is. Um, they do like to play fast. Um, they'll shoot as many. I think they have attempted almost as many threes as we have. So if we can get, you know, a great atmosphere in here on Sunday, uh, I think there could be a potential favorable matchup at every spot. They've got a freshman, Asia Blackwell, who athletically and explosiveness, and she's she's going to do some things like Roe does sometimes in our games where everybody just goes, <gasps> You know, a little gasp. She's got that in her. Uh, and their other freshman, Haley Frank, uh, doesn't look like a freshman either. So a young team, I think it's a matter of time before they figure it out. I just hope it's long after Sunday. Chelsea um, obviously got some things going in the second half, but how do you think she'll bounce back, you know, coming back home? You think? I just saw her walking in. She'll be fine. You know, that's the beautiful thing about uh, – I think this generation of kids and that we're all living in now too, it, it, it's gone. They, they flush it way faster than we used to. Um, and she needs to. She's got too many positives to pour back on um, to not be confident. Um, I, I, I think what you'll see out of her is kind of that kid you saw going into the SEC tournament, a little something to prove. She's always been better at that. She's always been better at that. And 
I, I don't think she's handled it poorly. I think she's been great. Uh, but it's hard when every time you look up, the NCAA is recognizing you as the top five player at your position or your name to the Razorback All-Decade player. Or, hey, it's, that's hard to keep a chip on your shoulder sometimes. But she's got it. If, if you've listened to her hog pod with Bo, you know that she's got a lot of things that she can draw from. So she's the least one I'll be worried about. She'll bounce back. And then the improvement Rokia has shown, just where's her confidence? And is she just, you know, continues to get better every game, it seems like. Yeah, she does. And she's learning a couple of positions now. Her, her comfort level with um, knowing her role. You know, I, I think I did a poor job with her as a freshman, uh, being one of the only freshmen that came in that was playing, expected to play, you know, last year. Uh, did a poor job probably explaining her role and, and putting her in situations where she could do what she was really, really good at. Um, and throughout the summer, um, she really – that's two years, two times in a row I've done that. Uh, throughout the summer, she really accepted it. You know, not, not only understood the role, but accepted what she was going to be doing. Uh, and I think that's why her minutes – you know, they do seem to still fluctuate a little bit based on matchups. But when you get in a big, tough physical game, like last night was, you want your biggest, toughest, most physical kids out there. And I thought she did a – she probably got us going in both quarters, both halves. Um, and um, I hope that Marquisha is watching Roe in this year to see the same type of how she's matured, how it comes to it. Um, because I think – Marquisha can be that player this time next year. We'll be sitting here talking about that maturation she has. Um, there's five times a game I look down and I, I want to put Marquisha in, but I'm just not ready to put her in a situation yet that I'm, I'm not 100% sure uh, that she can excel in. I want her to go in and be confident because I think that's why Roe got there. We didn't break Roe's confidence last year. And – she understood it and grasped it, and now you're looking at a kid who's going to be a big-time contributor for three years. Uh, and I think sometimes we get in too big of a rush to rush these freshmen, and the frustration, and it's just a really, really big jump. So Mark uh, Rowe has become a good leader, too. She's taken some leadership roles on. She's playing – if you all notice, I'll sub her for Amber or Lex right off the bat. And then she stays in, and the other one, whoever we took out, comes back in for the other guard. And then the other guard comes back in for Chelsea, and Roe goes to Chelsea's spot. So, you know, she's in that six-player rotation. Because I still, I'm, you know, and I'm kind of counting Aaron Taylor and Kiera as one person. Um, and then the six rotation is that other. So it's eight kids, but it's kind of a six-player rotation in the first half. All right. Thanks, y'all.